In this video, I will share how I'm setting up my Lightroom Classic for 2021. And specifically, I will show you how I automatically organize my photos by week to make the management process a little bit less intimidating. This works great if you do Project Life, but even though I'm not doing a weekly Project Life with an exact, you know, seven days worth of photos, I love having these smaller batches that make me feel successful. Okay, so we're here in Lightroom Classic, and remember, this is different from Lightroom, that's the cloud version. Um, and I can record a separate video for that if you are interested, but this is Lightroom Classic. My photos are automatically transferred from my phone to my computer and they go here to this Lightroom CC ecosystem folder. You can see I have 554 images there that have not yet been moved somewhere else. And so this is a folder on my computer um, where my recent phone photos are automatically brought in. Okay, so our task here is how do we get those photos into 2021 folders and then how do we see those organized by week okay so the first thing we're going to do is click on your top level photo library and of course it's always going to bring up whatever the first photo in there is i'm going to right click and i'm going to create folder inside of that so you, this is how you create a folder next to say your past year folders and i'll just label that 2021. Okay, so we can see that showed up right here and there's nothing in that folder. Then I'll right click again and say create folder inside 2021. I'm going to label this 01 January. I find it helpful to always use the two digit numeric code before a month so that my folders will sort in order of month because of course we know they're not going to sort properly if it's alphabetical. Okay, so we can see here under 2021 we have an 01 January folder and then you can repeat that same process to create folders for the rest of the year. And you can see I have those here for all of 2020 and of course past years as well. So these are folders on my computer. You can create these folders outside of Lightroom, but then you're gonna have to import the images. There have to be images in them for you to import them and have them to show up in your structure. So I prefer to do creating of folders inside of Lightroom as well as moving around of any images so that Lightroom always knows where they are. Okay. Now we're going to click here to that folder that has your incoming images. Now, if you're somebody who is manually moving all your images in, you can kind of ignore the rest of this step until we get to the weekly organization part. That's the part you might be more interested in. But I just want to share a little bit more about how I get my images into that January folder. So I, I'm in this kind of my import folder. It could be labeled by your phone. I have mine labeled Lightroom CC ecosystem. So I know that these are the cloud images that are coming in. And they're going to click on that grid view. And that brings up these items at the top. And I want to click on metadata. I use this all of the time because I like to look at my photos by date. I want to see groups of photos by date so that I can move them around. It also shows you camera, lens. So let's say you have photos coming in from multiple devices. It allows you to see, you know, what came from where. So I have 25 photos here for January. What I would do, is you can see that number one is already selected. I'm gonna press shift and click on number 25. Those are all highlighted and I'm gonna drag those over to January. You'll see a pop-up here saying that it's moving the files on the disk and you wanna say move. So it's basically moving these images out of the import folder. You can see those numbers are going down and they are now in that January folder. So I create this structure 
for my long-term photo library. I want my photos by year and by month. That's how people are going to look for them in the future. That is their physical location. Now, what we're going to do is to create basically a, a virtual or a layer of organization, but it's not real. It's kind of artificial organization that helps you see your photos in a different way. And we do this with collections. So collections in Lightroom Classic are, as I said, they are not physical organization. They are groupings of photos. So when you drag an image to a collection, you're not physically moving it. You're just associating it with that collection. The first thing we're going to do is click this plus sign here and we're going to create a collection set. So a collection set is a group of collections. It's that top level folder that looks like a little box. And we're going to label this 2021 Project Life. And we'll press create. Okay, so you can see that shows up right here, right below the 2020 Project Life folder. Okay, inside of a collection, you can create a regular collection or a smart collection. So a collection is where you drag images in and it allows you to see them in a specific way. Uh, a smart collection is where those images show up on their own based on the criteria that you set. And so that's what we're going to create here. We're going to create a smart collection. And because right now it's only January 2nd, we are in week 53 of actually last year. I'm going to share this as an example, and then we'll go on to create the additional, a couple additional weeks for this year. But I'll just label this one week 53 as the example, because I want my photos to pop up for you. So we're going to pick date, capture date as the first criteria. And then you want to say is in the range. And that allows you to select a beginning and end end date. So we want this to go from 2020, 12, 28, to 2021, 0103. Okay, and then we create a secondary criteria. And this is one that's really, really helpful to me. I do pick flag is not rejected. And so what this allows you to do, and we'll do an example here, is it allows you to press X on your keyboard or even flag it in your app to reject the photo for future deletion. You'll, you'll see it as grayed out. This is how I kind of filter through and very quickly curate my images and flag items for deletion. When you're working in smart collections, you can't quickly go and delete the photo, but you can very quickly press X on your keyboard to reject it. And so by having this filter criteria here for pick flag is not rejected, when I press that X button, I do not see it in the smart collection. Then later I can go back to the folder, find all the photos that have been rejected, or even go back to the whole year, find the photos that have been rejected and batch delete those. I find that a much easier step than going through and deleting one by one. So I use rejection first as a layer to identify items for deletion. So I'm gonna press create and we can see there's 99 photos from this past week. Okay, so let's do this again as another example. We'll do create smart collection. Now this is the official week one and one thing that's cool is that if you do this consecutively, it remembers this criteria. So all you have to do is go in and then change the dates. So it makes it really, really fast to jump in and update those dates. So January 4th to January 10th is the official week one of the year. I'm gonna create that smart collection. <laughs> Oops, we had the wrong year. So I'm gonna right click you can go edit smart collection and we need to change that to 2021. There we go. So now there are zero photos. Okay. So of course week 53, this is not in the right year and I actually don't have week 53 in 2020 yet. 
So you can actually drag this up to the previous collection set to have it there. So here's my week one. There's zero photos, but it is all ready for any photos that I take between January 4th and January 10th. So the biggest drawback to a smart collection is that you cannot sync this to the cloud. In contrast, if you create a manual collection, and I think I have some of those here, for example, these were some of my collections for the bucket list project. So I have those photos here for my biggest fear layout. You'll see this button here. It turns from a box to a kind of a little sideways lightning bolt, lightning bolt. And you can click that to sync that collection to Lightroom in the cloud. And if you're using the app on the mobile device with Classic on your computer, you'll see that as an album on your mobile device. Someday in the future, I really hope that they allow us to sync these smart collections to the cloud so that we can see this weak structure wherever we go. Okay, so let's dive into one of these collections here. So let's go into week 53. And I have this criteria that we set up and we know it's not going to show any images that I've pressed X on. Okay. So let's pick one that we know we don't. We don't need these like pictures of frames and coupons from Michaels. So I'm going to select that. I'll press X. I don't need that one either. Press X. Press X. I think that's a picture of Oh yeah, it's toilet paper and paper towels in our garage, indicating to my husband how much we have. Press X on that as well. You know, I would say 50% of my photos are random things like that or copies of Instagram stories and, and such rather than actual photos that I want to save. And I bet your photo library looks a little bit similar. So going through and rejecting those images is so handy. So that disappears them from the smart collection. If we pop back here to December, we should be able to scroll down to the end here. And let's find, see here we can see all these grayed out images. These are images that I've already rejected for deletion. So in order to actually delete those, I would open up this tray and then I would go over to filter here. And then I would do filter flagged and then I would pick this rejection flag that has the X. And so this shows me all of the images that I have flagged for rejection. I would do the same thing to shift highlight all of them. So you have the first one clicked and then I would press shift and then click on the last one. Then I would right click, remove photos and then delete from disk. I would choose this. I'm not sure, I'm not quite ready to do this. So I'm not gonna press it. I haven't looked at it. I always review them one last time, but that you would click this to delete from disk. If you remove them from Lightroom, you won't see them in Lightroom, but they'll still be on your computer. So there are only very rare cases, which I recommend clicking that because it can be really confusing. You want your Lightroom to reflect the images that you have on your drive. So if you remove them from Lightroom, but keep the images, you're going to end up with a mismatch and that can be really confusing in the long run. So I choose delete from disk to get rid of those that have been flagged for rejection. Okay. I think that's it for now. You can see here, I'm not quite um, up with filtering through and curating all of my photos for the rest of 2020, but I wanted to show you how to get set up for 2021. Um, I wish I had gone ahead and created all those folders in advance and I'm going to go and do that now so that I am all set up for the rest of 2021. Let me know if you have any questions at all. Take care.